friend of the show, Eric Schmidt, who is a state senator, and you will soon be running for treasurer. That's correct. That's right. That's our crack uh, research staff uh, found that out <laughs> earlier. Uh, uh, how's, how's the campaign going? It's good. You know, it's a big state getting around and uh, doing all the things you should do two years out. And we should also say that uh, you are on the board of Nurses for Newborns? I am. Yes. Yep. And so we have uh, made a pledge to all elected officials that if you support Nurses for Newborns, we will certainly support you, but we have our eye on you. And anytime you think about doing anything, <laughs> if you think about doing something wrong to Nurses for Newborns. I'm aware you're very effective because you say that every time I'm on the air. That's so exactly it's, right. It, it, <laughs> it's it's repetitive every single right. time you're on. The evil eye. Like the Manchurian candidate here. <laughs> yeah, right? That's exactly right. All right. So um, you, uh, what, you want to propose some legislation here? Yeah, uh, pre-filing starts, so in advance of our legislative session in January of every year, December 1 opens the pre-filing period. So priorities that you want to get out there and get an early bill number that get referred, then go to committee earlier, and then get hopefully out on the floor earlier are filed on December 1st. So right. on December 1st, I filed a bill to reform our municipal court system. Which, which is the one people keep complaining about issues with the, the better together had their studies everyone no one agrees on anything but everyone agrees the muni court system is broken it is and um i think for far too long we've kind of just looked the other way um but uh you know there's just too many municipalities out there collecting too much revenue on these traffic schemes these traffic ticket schemes that are out there and we all know where they're at right. um and uh, you've got for example 14 municipalities in st louis county where traffic tickets are their single biggest source of revenue. I mean, that's a problem. You've got 81 municipal courts in St. Louis County. That's 61 more than any other circuit in the entire state. You've got 22% of the population here, 50% of the traffic tickets and fines. So clearly, these are being used as ATMs on the backs, quite frankly, the people who can afford them the least. Right. So, All right. So what does your bill do? So it would lower the threshold. Right now, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a statute out there that's called Max Creek Law. There's a little town in, in uh, Missouri called Max Creek that was a notorious speed trap. So this bill years ago was named after Max Creek. But it says that a municipality can only um, derive no more than 30% of its revenue from traffic tickets and fines which is a big which is a big number i right. mean that's a that's a and um, there there are there are some, several municipalities that are are violating that law my bill would lower that threshold to 10% which i think is a reasonable number and what it would do is i think hopefully restore some of the trust that's broken down i think when you what we've seen now is now that this issue's been brought to light um, it's a problem i mean you've got you, you essentially have these speed traps out there. You've got these bloated governments that are um, existing and padding their budgets off of off of motorists, and it's not the best way for citizens and law enforcement to interact. It's just not. But the Max Creek Law is in effect now. Right. Thirty percent, no more. But these towns are violating it. Where is the Where's the law enforcement? Where's the, the mechanism to force these cities not to do that? Right, it's a good question. So right now the consequence if you violate Max Creek is the, the overage uh, of the 30% is supposed to go to the state. Um, th that's probably not happening. Auditor Schweik is doing an audit of the eight municipalities that are um, to believe to be over the 30%. Right now it's a self-reporting system. Right. So those are the things we're going to look at too. And the other consequence is those, those municipal courts are supposed to lose their jurisdiction. And there's some question about what does that really mean. And so we're going to clean that up too. What about I get pulled over speeding, um, I get a ticket, and then I go to the guy on the corner, pay, pay that lawyer $50. Uh, two months later, he, he calls me up and he says, that $100 speeding ticket is now a $300 noise violation. Now, does that noise violation count as a speeding ticket, which counts as a moving violation, which, which counts against well, this we're gonna, 10%? That's another thing that we need to do. We need to clarify what does revenue mean from traffic tickets and fines. I mean, there are, McGraw, there are some examples that I've heard of since I've quietly taken on this issue, but it's become public. Mm -hmm. So I've spent a lot of time working with groups across the board. And this is an interesting issue from liberal constituencies to conservative constituencies that see the abuse here. And that's right. usually a recipe that we can get something done. But there are some municipalities out there that are charging $400 fines. Mm -hmm. And what we've really done here is these municipalities in these courts have created like a debtor's prison. I mean, that's these are civil infractions. Right. You have people going to jail for missing a court date who then who then get fired from their job, can't pay their rent. That's not a good situation. I think we can do better. It's been broken, and uh, hopefully, I think this 
this could be a, a very significant and serious reform. What are you hearing in Jefferson City? Um, are there people supporting this? Yeah, a lot of bipartisan support. I've gotten calls even since I filed it from um, some legislators throughout the state. I've talked to a lot of the local delegation that includes Republicans and Democrats that this is something that we can get behind together and push. You know, kind of like when we took on um, edu- you know some of the education issues last year. We tried to get our house in order first. We tried to, as a local de- delegation, that is a diverse delegation, to try to say, hey, we see some issues here that we'd like to address together. I think this is going to be one of those kinds of issues. I hope that it is because um, I think people, and I grew up in North County, and uh, I grew up along kind of the Rock Road corridor. My grandmother still lives in St. Anne, and that to me is the is the best example of what's wrong right now. When right. Northwest Plaza was North was Northwest Plaza, you did not see, you know, ten police cars, St. Anne police cars on Highway 70. Now there's no Northwest Plaza, and guess what? There's right. ten police cars on Highway 70, and that's just not the right way for government to act. Um, Pine, let's say Pine Lawn because I like to pick on Pine Lawn. Thirty-two hundred residents, seventeen thousand tickets last year, twenty-five thousand warrants. Their fees have gone up almost a million dollars in the last five years. So if you do away with this, they don't get that money. And we all know that when you're taking away somebody's money, they're not going to be happy about it. So you're going to be oxing somebody's somebody's money somewhere, somebody's budget, and these towns might go away. There's going to be pushback. There will be. Um, I think the municipal league has already stated their opposition to it. But you know what? Um, you know, I didn't run for office and get elected to just work on consent bills about you know naming certain things. I mean, some of the things you're supposed to do are hard. Right. And I think you, when you see injustices and you see problems, um, you're supposed to try to fix them. And so there'll definitely be some pushback. Um, but uh, but I think everybody knows. I mean. I just think it's been a dirty little secret around, right. especially St. Louis, for a long time. We would is- laugh at it and snicker about it, but we had, and I've said this before, we had no idea how much damage it was doing to the people who were living there. Well, and think about you know somebody who comes from out of town who's doing business, and their, their first their first welcome to the St. Louis region is um, you right. know on Highway 70. And that is not to say that uh, we shouldn't enforce the laws, but I think everybody understands what's going on, that these are these have become revenue-generating machines. Right. Um, and in fact... What's crazy is um, you actually have municipalities that are budgeting increases of their traffic tickets and fines for the next year. You know, like Nostradamus predicting that there are more speeders. I mean, we all know what this is. This right. is to say, you know what, we're gonna, we need to have uh, more tickets issued next year. And that is wrong. Right. I mean, that's just wrong. So where, how confident are you that this could actually get the readings, get the committee, get it out of committee, get it on the floor to be voted on? to sit on the governor's desk by the end of the term. Well, I am hopeful. I chair the uh, the Economic Development and Local Government Committee. I've talked to our Senate pro tem. Uh, I'm hopeful that this bill will go to my committee um, and, uh, and get things moving quickly. I, I intend to work with whoever has good, constructive ideas about whether it's um, you know what the law should look like, or what the enforcement mechanism ought to be. I think that's what good legislation is. You know, looks like and right. what we're supposed to do. But uh, I think we're going to be very serious about this issue. This is not just a a bill that uh, you throw out there and and uh, for attention. I mean, this has some serious consequences, and I think can uh, really improve. Um, some of the conditions that, that have been brought to light recently. I'm not going to ask you the question and waste your breath about what the governor thinks about this because he hasn't he hasn't commented on this. No idea. He? Yeah, no. yeah, no idea. Right. Uh, imagine that. State Senator Eric Schmidt, who's going to be running for treasurer at the end of two years. You'll certainly come back whenever you have anything you, you want to say. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Thank good. Uh, State Senator Eric Schmidt, uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks, guys. 730 here, Big 550, KTR.